Welcome back to Squawk Box. Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg is out of a job, capping off a year of difficulty for the leadership at that aerospace giant. Uh, Chairman Dave Calhoun will take the helm. Here's what he told us when he joined Squawk Box early last month. My appointment of chairman was very much about division of duty and the, uh, that experience I brought from my aviation days and what I think is the significant overhauls that have to go on inside our, inside our company to increase visibility on the subject of safety straight up to the board and right down to the bottom of the organization and create more independence in the functions that represent safety. Okay, we're now joined by Jeffrey Seinfeld, Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Studies at the Yale School of Management. Carlos Watson's also here, Ozzy co-founder and CEO, and uh, CBC contributor Michelle Cruzer Cabrera is at the table. Tom Farley's here. Everybody's here. Good morning. Uh, Jeff, though, you have been, I, I think that you, you were a backer for a long time of Dennis Mullenberg, no? Uh, no, what I wasn't was uh, not a finger pointer that there's a demon. I don't believe that there has um, necessarily been any, any uh, uh, deception, right. any fraud here. And that's what I thought. There was a, a rush to always find a bad guy. Sometimes there are really unfortunate circumstances that happen. And it was uh, either by, uh, by bad calls or uh, by bad technology but not because of bad actors, okay, so and I don't look, think there's a bad look, actor Okay, here. so look forward, though, for just a second here on, on Calhoun. Is he the right guy? And the reason I ask the question is there's clearly, uh, you know, he's got, some, he's got the experience. He's, he's, he's in there sort of, but sort of not, which is a good, cuts both ways. Um, but then he's in there, in there, in that he was on the air just a month ago, clearly blessing the, the plan as it was. I think he, too, was taking the same position. There aren't any demons here and was supportive of Dennis Milberg. When we take a look at what, what's going wrong here, it's so odd on a holiday season to see somebody shot at sunset. We don't usually see in a non- This uh, is usually when you shoot, though, right? Well, in, 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 if there's it's a scary. catastrophic situation. Right. Uh, but here, this is obviously the catastrophe was last year, and this is unfolding in the, in the midst of repair. Uh, to, uh, to, to have this happen so suddenly right now, uh, where there's not a character issue is, is surprising. However, uh, it is a cumulative weight of all these things. And you look at those problems that are there, the, the FAA regulatory issues, the air carriers, of course, the symbolic uh, and, 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 and genuine problem they had, of course, with the, uh, the, the Starliner uh, spacecraft, uh, uh, again, of all things. Well, that was software. it, right? I mean, it was just, that was probably the one thing that they were saying, this is enough. Well, that, and I think United making a technology, you know, equipment decision with Brand X and stuff right. like that, I think there were some catalysts out there. But Calhoun is the guy to address all these okay. things. However, what we've talked about yesterday on all this is if it's only Calhoun. Calhoun's resume is so unbelievable, you can't, you can't imagine Hollywood could have crafted somebody who's been a CEO, who's run a 60,000-person, you know, aviation manufacturing company and stuff. However, uh, the CFO... Uh, is fantastic. This guy, Greg Smith, he's a decade younger. He's all dressed up, ready to go, and he's the culture carrier on the inside, whereas Calhoun can speak to regular. How, 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 how long do you think it takes Calhoun to actually turn things around? Because right now, it feels like there's a lot of stasis, a lot of stagnation. Uh, production's not moving. Some people down the chain are not producing anymore. Well, there's a, that's a very good question. There's a little gap just in what we heard yesterday and what actually has happened. We were told yesterday that Greg Smith's the interim. That Calhoun's unwinding things at Blackstone. In fact, Calhoun, late afternoon yesterday, was already going off to air carriers in the FAA. So I think he's hitting the ground running, uh, you know, not to use aviation uh, technology uh, uh, terms here. But he's, he's actually taken off, hit the runway, I guess. And uh, I think Calhoun's making a big difference. Kellner, uh, Larry Kellner, the former head of Continental Airlines, who is the head of their audit committee, is also reaching out to air carriers who are pretty unhappy right now. So I think those are some uh, uh, fantastic moves. So I think they're making... A big difference soon. A lot of the problem here is a communications issue, and I think that that's what they're addressing. And well, can, I, can, I, can I ask? I want to go back in the past and talk about communications because you you were on this network. I was watching from home, and you defended Dennis Millenberg, and you said they're doing a great job of communication since the accident. But since since the accident, you said since the accidents, the tragic accidents, they have done a done, they have done a good job. My question for you: I'm not questioning the integrity of Dennis Millenberg. This is a tragic episode. I think he's a person with great integrity. Do you feel hoodwinked in that the communications, with the benefit of hindsight, were wrong? As I told on this very set and told Dennis Muhlenberg several times to his face, he was getting a BB minus on communications. That's not a failing grade that some uh, wanted to hang him over. What is uh, that grade now? Because uh, I think it's a, a D minus. A D minus. Or an F. 
it's, when you box in the regulator, it wasn't a good. And move. you're wrong multiple times about the dates that your most exciting product comes back online. Four times we missed those right. dates, and that's a big is issue. Is that a B that's, minus? That's a big credibility. It's not a good grade. That's a big credibility hit. And uh, whether or not there was a naivete or whatever, believing that they're going to make these deadlines, but to get in front of your regulators, you know, in the world of finance, is not a great move. Well, by the way, the two regulators, Dixon and the guy that runs the NTSB, they're both not only pilots. Right. They were 737 pilots. And if you know pilots, they're in charge. And now you got a guy coming in who's basically telling two pilots, here's what we're going to do. Not only are they regulators, which is their job to tell him what they're going to do, but they're also pilots. And so I, I imagine they were doubly ticked off. You also have these nine international authorities, you know, the, the Joint uh, Authorities Technology Review Board. And some of those countries don't like us a lot, like China and others, not making it easy. So all the more, you don't want to get in front of those guys because the FAA should be our ambassador to that group. You don't want to alienate them. We had a whistleblower that I believe was probably, uh, I don't know if a faux whistleblower, but certainly a misleading one. This guy, uh, Faulkner, I think was his name, a, a test pilot that uh, created some noise and that surprised the FAA too because the Justice Department knew all about it and the Justice Department was examining the FAA so Boeing couldn't tell the FAA because they're all they're both uh, being investigated at the same time and that that sort of further alienated this guy Steve Dixon the, the FAA job, job one for this guy now is to once to reset expectations communicate in a more effective way and, and I don't want to say timid but a, a, with a much better tactile sense than what we saw with Mullenberg before right I mean he's been on the phone from what we understand for 48 hours Mullenberg now. was continually chasing the headlines to your point too whereas uh, Calhoun is out in front of them he knows how to frame the issues very well I think he's charismatic uh, he that is. way. I, I, you know I, I know him a little bit personally I mean he's on the board of Virginia Tech where so I kind of know him through he's just a nice guy he's he's a great communicator he's a genes no tie. He's a salt of the earth dude. He's the he's the polar opposite right. of Mullenberg's. I don't know Mullenberg personally, but the impression of just super stiff, super formal. Calhoun's like, hey, let's go have a beer maybe and talk about this but, and work it out. I think that's right.